Hello everyone, welcome back to Biotechnica. So previously we were talking about uh, zoology questions and botany questions, which is already has come in our examination. We were talking about how to deal those questions and we were also talking about the detailed explanation of all these questions. So we have done botany questions, half of it, and we have done zoology questions. So I'm gonna take you to the rest of the questions and an important news to all of you, if you guys really wanted to know uh, neat is biotechnica you can join the telegram channel where you get all the updates and you'll get a lot of freebies you'll get a lot of worksheets and you can also subscribe to our channel biotechnica and if you like the video please like share and subscribe and share this video to as many as people as possible so so let's proceed on to the questions last class we have discussed almost some 20 questions so remaining questions we are going to deal with it so let's proceed on to the Next questions. Okay, so till 170, this is the paper code S3. So we have done till 170. So rest of the questions will deal. 171 question in the taxonomy categories, which hierarchical arrangement in ascending order is correct in case of animals is the question. So they have given options over here. Just understand the question. It is ascending. So ascending means we know it is from small to big. So suppose if I have to talk about this. So we know the largest one is going to be kingdom. Kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus and species. So species is the most smallest one or we can say the closely related ones are actually seen in this species so we can say so this is the smallest one and kingdom is the most largest one suppose you can talk about a plant kingdom you can talk about an animal kingdom so we kingdoms are the largest one so they ask you to write it from species and then we can say species genus family order class phylum and kingdom has to be the answer but in our options they have given kingdom phylum class order family genus and species so the question says ascending but in the option we don't find any kind of ascending statements so we have to wait for the answer keys until we get it from the um, nta so we'll just wait for it so for now we'll just mark it as three because it is the statement which is actually coming like kingdom phylum class order family and genus which goes like this so for now we'll make it as three but let's wait for the answer so none of the option actually correlates with a question because the question actually says about ascending so let's wait for the answer key until we get the next question is 172. Identify the microorganism which is responsible for the production of immunosuppressive molecules, which is going to be a cyclosporin is given. So understand the question. This is a question from microbes and human welfare. You get direct questions always and the same has come over here. Which of the following statements are correct ones? So we have to find out which microorganism is responsible for producing this immunosuppressive agent what is this immunosuppressive agent suppose let's talk about a person who is going to have some kind of kidney transplant or heart transplant whatever it is so what exactly they will do they used to take the or we can say they used to match whichever kidney actually matches with the patient and they will introduce that donor's kidney into the patient but what the patient will do is since it is foreign kidney to them they will show some kind of resistance or we can say they starts producing antibody in their body which shouldn't happen so what exactly or else what will happen if they produce antibody if the patient is going to produce antibody the kidney graft will be rejected it will not accept the body will not accept so graft rejection will take place in order to prevent this, as soon as the operation or the transplantation is done, they used to give some immune suppressive, which means they are letting the production of antibody less in your body. If your body is producing less antibody, it will not produce, it will not think kidney is going to be antigen for them. So no problem. But they used to keep the patient in the hospital for so long so that they can monitor them because antibody is very less for them. So they will have some other infections also. The question is, cyclosporin is given as an immunosuppressive one. 
where is this cyclosporin actually prepared from from which organism it is actually going to be a fungus so it is going to be answer is option number 3 which is trichoderma polysporum which is a fungus suppose if you are talking about aspergillus niger it is responsible for production of citric acid we can say and streptococcus cerevisiae actually we know it is going to be staphylococcus or saccharomyces cerevisiae we know if the question they have given saccharomyces cerevisiae then we can say it is going to be um, yeast which is responsible for the production of alcohols or in helping in the formation of bread we can say but this is streptococcus they have given so you should not choose this option clostridium butylicum is responsible for the production of butyric acid so this is also a wrong wrong option so the correct answer for this question is option number 3 which is trichoderma polysporum the next question lipers loops yes they are talking about reproductive health chapter contraceptives and we know contraceptives can be given in the form of pills or if we have to talk about intrauterine devices so the name gives you an idea intra is inside uterine means they are going to introduce this into the uterus and it's a device which means it is not going to be a medicine it is not a medicine at all not a medicine so which is a device some kind of plastics or it can be in the form of copper loops anything and this intrauterine devices can be classified into three categories one is non medicated intrauterine devices and another one is going to be copper intrauterine devices and some hormonal intrauterine devices are also there so now the question for us is lipers loop is what type of contraceptive we know it's iud so if you see the question we are found with first option and the second option we cannot choose a barrier barrier in, is not introduced into the uterus so you cannot use this too so this goes wrong over here so we would be confused whether it is non medicated or copper so it is not copper they will not release copper they will, they are non medicated one so the answer is simple it is option number 1 which is non medicated iud so option 1 is the correct answer because it is intrauterine device which is a non medicated device and option 2 copper it is not the correct one because i lipers loop do not produce any kind of copper so this is wrong and the last two are going to be barrier ones the next question 174 if the length of the dna molecule is 1.1 meters what will be the approximate number of bases so suppose if we have to talk about the dna the dna used to have a t g and suppose let me consider c the distance between these two consecutive base pair we already know it is going to be 0.39 let's let's make it like this and then we'll go in for detail and we know about the length of the dna so they have given haploid set very important they are talking about a haploid set if they have given the length of the dna is 2.2 then definitely it's going to be a diploid set so they have given length length of the dna which is 1.1 and we know about the base pair consecutive distance and we have to find out how many number of base pairs we already know by normal things like it is going to be 6.6 into 10 to the power of 9 for diploid 2n and here it is going to be 3.3 into 10 to the power of 9 if you know the answer directly you can literally mark the answer as 3.3 into 10 to the power of 9 base pairs totally but let's do the calculation suppose if you want to find out the length of the dna let's write it the length of the dna is equal to the number of base pairs into the distance between consecutive base pairs distance between two consecutive base pairs so this is the formula now they have given the length of the dna which is going to be 1.1 correct yes and we doesn't know the number of base pairs which we have to find out the distance is going to be these two distance a t and g and c so this two distance they are talking about it is always going to be 0.34 into 10 to the power of minus 9 meters so if you are going to calculate it for x x is equal to we can do 1.1 divided by 0.34 into 10 to the power of minus 
if you're going to do this one you are ultimately going to have 1 into 10 to the power of 9 divided by 0 0.34 so you your answer is going to be 3.3 .3 into 10 to the power of 9 base pairs so the answer for this question is going to be very simple which is 3.3 .3 into 10 to the power of 9 base pairs the next question 175 question detrivorous breakdown detritus into small particle this process is called as what very important so first we have to understand what is detrivorous detrivorous means they are earthworms so the one which actually undergoes or degradation process listen carefully there are four terminologies they have given so detrivorous usually perform all the detritus which is nothing but the organic materials and they break all the organic material which can be any biomolecules so it can be a protein it can be an amino acid it can be a nucleic acid it can be a carbohydrate anything so they they are going to break all these things into very very tiny particles and that process we know it is going to be what fragments fragments means breaking them into pieces so breaking a large molecule into small small particles not molecules actually particles and this is going to be the correct answer the answer for this question is fragmentation but what is humification suppose if you're talking about any kind of decomposition is going to take place first what will happen all the organic matter will be converted into humus Humus, if you observed in the soil, it will be very dark brown, amorphous, solid will be there. That is called as humus. There you will see the earthworms actually. So this is actually done by any bacteria, fungi, anything. It can be microorganism. This process is the formation of humus is called humification. Decomposition, the process of decay, decaying or decomposing something is going to be decomposition. This is a wrong statement. Catabolism. Catabolism means breaking off a very large molecule, not the particle, into a very, very small particle. So I'm just splitting all this molecule into one, one. So this is also a wrong statement. We will not choose this statement. So the correct answer for this question is option number four, which is fragmentation. Which of the following, 176 question, is not a connective tissue? They have asked not. We know about connective tissue. The name gives you an idea. It's helpful for connecting something else. So the first one is going to be cartilages, neuroglia, and blood, and then adipose tissue. We know cartilages are going to be specialized connective tissue, correct? Because these cartilages are actually present in vertebral column, we know. Into vertebral column disc, we can say. So it is actually present over there, which are made up of chondrocytes, yes? And neuroglia, let's keep it as such, blood. Blood is a specialized connective tissue, which is fluid connective tissue. It's a specialized fluid connective tissue. So this is also a connective tissue. So we cannot choose this option because they ask which one of not a connective tissue. Adipose tissue. Adipose tissue is going to be a loose connective tissue. So this adipose tissue is actually present beneath your skin, which actually stores fat. So this is also a connective tissue. The name gives you an idea, neuroglia. Glia means glue. So neural cells are connected by neuroglia, which is not a connective tissue. Which means we can say they are going to be nervous tissues and not a connective tissue. So the correct answer for this question goes is second one, which is neuroglia. The next question, we'll go for it. 177 question. This is where the trick they have given. Correct match for the disease and its symptom. Correct match you have to do. Just check over. Myasthenia gravis, they have given. Muscular dystrophy and arthritis and tetany. First, let's look for the first option. You have to choose the correct statement. Myasthenia gravis is a genetic disorder. No, myasthenia gravis is a problem which happens because of immune disorder. It is because of immune disorder. So it is not a genetic disorder. This disease will not happen from your father to the later stages. It is happening because of immune problems or we can say antigen problem or antibody production problem. So immune disorder, what exactly happens is it is going to cause problem in the neuromuscular junction. So neuromuscular junction, which is where the muscle and the neurons, where it used to get the stimulus, that area is going to be affected. 
if a neuron is not able to communicate to a muscle the muscle will undergo weakening and paralysis of the skeleton muscle so this point is correct but it is not a genetic disorder so if you know only weakening and paralysis you might have went wrong but if you know it's an immune disorder you will never choose this option so this statement is wrong the second statement says that muscular dystrophy is a autoimmune disorder no muscular dystrophy is going to be what a genetic disorder they just made this option kind of ulta so this is actually a genetic disorder and this disorder actually reduces the number of skeletal muscles or we can say the skeletal muscles just got destroys because of genetic disorder if skeletal muscles are getting destroyed ultimately the person is going to suffer from all this problem progressive degeneration of skeletal muscle so you will not be choosing this because it is going to be what it is a genetic problem third third statement arthritis all of you know about arthritis arthritis is a problem where you usually see in case of females whose joints are actually inflamed knee joints we can say so this is the correct statement exactly so they ask you to find out the correct statement so the answer is going to be option number 3 but let's check for the next statement which is tetany so let's talk about tetany so the correct answer is 3 but let's talk about tetany so what is this tetany this is actually a problematic situation suppose if you are talking about thymus which is a butterfly shaped gland and this is the thyroid gland let's write let's talk about thyroid and thyroid is going to be two in number inside the thyroid you're going to see four glands and these glands are called as parathyroid glands so you're going to actually see four parathyroid glands and this parathyroid glands whenever you hear of a word gland glands are actually made up of cells and there is a very specific cells called as chief cells and these chief cell is going to produce something called parathyroid hormone the major role of a parathyroid hormone is to increase the calcium level in the blood very important it increases calcium level in the blood so tetany we can say when anybody whose parathyroid hormone is going to become less yes listen carefully the main role of a parathyroid gland is to produce parathyroid hormone which increases the calcium level in the blood this is a normal role if anybody has parathyroid the calcium level actually increases in the blood but suppose if a person is going to have less of parathyroid hormone what exactly happened the calcium level will will become decrease in the blood but in the option they have given high calcium so if parathyroid hormone becomes less there is going to be decrease in the calcium level we know that calcium is plays a way, major role in muscle contraction sarcoplasmic reticulum actually releases calcium so if calcium becomes less the muscle contraction becomes less if muscle contraction is becoming less you will see muscle twisting twisting or twisting happens which actually causes rapid spasm so it is not high it is actually low calcium level so this is wrong statement this is genetic this is immune so all the statements are wrong and only the third option goes correct so arthritis this is the correct answer for question number 177 the next question which of the following statements with respect to endoplasmic reticulum is incorrect they are talking about the incorrect statement in prokaryotes only rough endoplasmic reticulum are present SCR are the sites of lipid synthesis smooth endoplasmic reticulum smooth endoplasmic reticulum and RER has ribosomes attached to the endoplasmic reticulum so i'm going to write RER and SCR here so RER usually do not have ribosomes so no ribosomes plus endoplasmic reticulum is called smooth endoplasmic reticulum rough endoplasmic will have ribosomes present plus endoplasmic reticulum the major role of the smooth endoplasmic reticulum is for fat synthesis or we can say lipid synthesis so the second statement talks about smooth endoplasmic reticulum are the area or the sites of lipid synthesis which is a correct statement but they ask you to find out the incorrect statement so i will just eliminate this option the next one rough endoplasmic reticulum has ribosomes attached to er yes it is a correct statement so but they ask for incorrect so let me eliminate this one scr is devoid of ribosome this is a correct statement 
So I'm just going to eliminate the correct statement because I have to choose the incorrect statement. In first option, if you are seeing carefully, in prokaryotes, only RER is present. Listen, there's a there's actually a twist here. Usually in prokaryotes, we know they don't have a true nucleus, which means they don't have an organelle. No organelles. If they do not have an organelle, there is no RER, no SER. So the, the first statement goes wrong. In prokaryotes, only RER is present. No RER, no SER, no Golgi apparatus, nothing is present. So the first option is the wrong statement. So they ask you to find out the incorrect statement. So the correct answer for this question goes is first one. Yes. The next question in gene therapy, ADA deficiency, the patient requires periodic infusion of genetically engineered lymphocytes because so if you're going to treat some patients uh, many uh, drugs are given but nothing works we used to target only the genes so what they usually take is they used to take the lymphocyte of the patient and they used to add ada genes with the vector viral vectors and they will grow them in the laboratory outside the patient's body it is in vitro situation that time they used to keep on infusing after this they will take this lymphocytes and introduce into patient. So the question is, why are they keep on introducing this lymphocytes continuously? Why one time lymphocytes can be given and we can leave it as such? Why we have to give this lymphocytes continuously inside the patient's body? That's the question. Lymphocytes from patient's body are grown in the culture, which means in the lab, in the, uh, we can say in the petri dishes, outside the body. Is it because of that are we giving the lymphocytes? No. We actually do this in the laboratory, but that is not the reason we are actually introducing. If you have observed, lymphocytes usually have a specific period of time for its survival. Like RBC used to have 120 days. So WBC has a specialized days, like six or five or four days. So what exactly, it depends on the person very specifically. So what exactly happened? That lymphocytes used to die in the body immediately. So you have to keep on introducing the ADA infused lymphocytes into the patient's body. So genetically engineered lymphocytes are not immortal cell. Th this statement actually is very important because immortal means which is actually keep on going. So immortal cells means bacteria always lives. You cannot damage a battery at all. If one bacteria dies, another bacteria comes, which is immortal. They keep on coming. But lymphocytes are not like that. You have to give one time, they die. So they are not immortal cells, which means they keep dying. So in order to prevent the patient losing the lymphocyte, we always introduce uh, lymphocytes into the body. So the correct answer for this question is second one. The third answer is wrong. The fourth option, it is not because we are introducing in the embryonal stage. If you have introduced this into the embryo stage itself, there is no need to introduce a lymphocyte because the baby will be normal as always. So the correct answer for this question is we can say second one, right? Yes. Natural selection where more individuals acquire specific character value other than the mean value. Okay, this is a very easy one, which is disruptive, stabilizing and directional. So we're going to talk about this one. The answer is very simple. Natural selection where more individuals, let's talk about it. So let me make, this is the number of individuals. How many individuals are actually present? And let me make this central point as mean. They are telling in a natural selection, more individuals acquires, which means the curve is going to on to the right direction, more than mean value. Okay, so more individuals acquire specific characters other than the mean value. This is directional. It goes on to the right. So the answer is directional. So this we have studied in case of industrial mel melanism, right? Directional selections. So the answer is option four, but let's check what is the other things. So what are the types we already know? Directional selection. We already know about industrial melanism. So what exactly happens? is this is the mean value we can say. This is the mean. So when there is going to be population, suppose let's take, let me not write this. Let me make when there is a population or we can say pollution is taking place, lot of population, pollution has taken place. 
Now, what will happen? The tree is going to have a lot of black spots deposited or the polluted air deposited or all the chemicals deposits on this tree bark. So only the black moth can live in here. Correct. Because it is completely covered by black color. So black color will be bound over there. So other predators, birds cannot eat them because it is hidden, camouflage. But if a white color moth comes in bind here, what will happen? In a black, it will be clearly visible. So what they are telling is industrial melanism is an example. So whichever survives is going to be survival of the fittest. So they are telling directional means more than the mean value. Stabilizing means the average mean value is going to be maximum. In diversing means peripheral sites. This side also, this side also, there will be maximum number of people. So the natural selection in this case, they have very specifically said they are more than the mean value is going to be directional. So the correct answer for this question is option number four, which is directional. Let's see the next question, 181 question. Given below are two statements. The statement one says, restriction endonuclease, recognize specific sequence to cut a DNA known as palindromic sequence. Yes, we already know what is palindromic sequence. When you read it from this side and when you read it backward, it's going to remain the same. So we can say like this, let me make it here, eco R1. Or we, we used to say Malayalam as an example. Let me give a basic one, Malayalam. So when you read Malayalam like this, and when you're going to read Malayalam like this, it's going to remain the same. Yes. So GAA, TTC. We will have GAA, TTC. So if you read it like this, it is GAA, TTC. And if you read it like this, it is GAA, TTC. This is the palindromic sequence. So what they're telling, endonuclease usually cuts a DNA in the center, very specific sequence. Suppose if it is going to have GAA TTC and here it is going to have GAA TTC. So a restriction endonuclease recognize a specific sequence, correct, very specific sequence to cut a DNA, very specifically palindromes they used to cut. So this is a correct statement. Let's look for the second statement. Restriction endonucleases cuts the DNA strands a little away from the center. Yes, very important. It doesn't come and cut at this area. It actually cuts before, a little away from the palindromic sequence. So this statement is also going to be the correct statement. So the answer for this question is statement one and statement two are correct. So the correct answer is going to be option number three. Yes. Let's look for the next one. In eight drosophila, in a laboratory population of 80, died during a week. The death rate in the population is how much? Very easy. Totally, in a lab, we can say there are 80 drosophila. Out of that, the death ones, or we can say eight died. Eight drosophila died. So you have to find out what is the death rate in the population for how many individuals per week you have to find out. Very simple. You just have to put how many death rate we have to find out. So you have to just ask how number of drosophila or organism died divided by the total number of organism. That's all. So it is going to be totally the dead ones are going to be 8. Total ones are going to be 80. So it comes around 0.1. So 0.1 individuals of drosophila is dying every week is going to be the answer. So the answer for this question is Option number three, which is point one. In which of the following animals, digestive tract has additional chambers like crop and gizzards? This crop and gizzards you'll be studying in insects also, like cockroaches we have seen. And the same you will see in birds. Birds. So you can just easily find out this answer very quickly because you have to check wherever there is animals, just reject the option. So you're seeing crocodile here, rejected. Fish rejected and chameleon is there rejected and then before is a uh, tortoise we can say vangarus yes rejected blue whale rejected the only option which has birds all the birds is option number two so you will see crop and gizzards in birds and insects like 
cockroach. So pavo, we already know peacock, turkeys comes under pavo. Sitacula is going to be, we know parrot. And corvus is going to be what? It is going to be crow. And cutla is bony fish. Columba, we'll see all these things in the image. So this is pavo. Beautiful. And this is going to be parrot, sitacula. Sitacula. And this is going to be crow, is going to be corvus. And this is going to be crocodile. So we will write it as crocodilus. This is crocodile. And this is going to be bufo. And this is going to be chameleon. Chameleon. And this is bangrus. This is bangrus snake. And this is going to be the fish, which we can say cutla fish, bony fish, which people used to eat. And this is the blue whale, we can say. Blue whale is called as Balanoptera. Balanoptera. Or we can say it's going to be blue whale. So what they said, pavo, sitacula and corvus or crow are birds. Com Columba is going to be pigeon. Columba is pigeon. So this is the correct answer. The rest of the things, cutla is bony fish, you cannot choose. Crocodiles and chameleons, this one and crocodiles are going to be what? They are going to be reptiles. And bufo is an amphibian and blue whale is an aquatic mammal. So the second option is going to be the correct option for this question. Yes. The next one, identify the asexual reproductive structure in case of penicillin. Very easy question. Penicillium, we are going to talk. This is going to be very easy. Conidia. So the answer for this question is option number four, which is conidia. What about gemmules? What about buds? What about zoospores? So usually you will find gemmules in sponges or we can say phylum porifera. Phylum porifera used to have gemmules. This is serving as an asexual reproducing or structure, we can say. You will see hydra used to have buds and that bud will fall down. So buds are seen in hydra only. And I told you zoo spores are seen in Chlamydomonas, which is a green algae. But the question is penicillium. So it is always going to be conidia. So the correct answer is going to be option number four, which is conidia. Okay, let's look for this next question. 185 question. Which of the following is not the function? Very important. Not the function of conducting part of the respiratory system. Okay, so which is going to be the conductive part? First, we have to understand. Conduction means something which is taken inside. So from the nostrils, we can say nostrils. We can say. And then there's going to be nasopharynx. And then there's going to be larynx, which is the sound box. And then there's going to be trachea, we can say. And after trachea, you will be seeing bronchi or bronchus. I'm writing plural format. And then it's going to be bronchioles. So this, until this part from the nostril area till the bronchioles, we used to call it conducting part. So suppose if you are talking about the nose, so from here it actually goes and then you have a nasopharynx and then you have a larynx here, this is larynx and then you have a trachea, you have a trachea and then you have a bronchi and then you have bronchioles like minute branches like this. And from here till this part we used to call as a conducting part. Now the question is, which is not the function of the conducting froth? From nostrils till the bronchioles, what is the role not performed by them? Temperature of the inhaled hair is brought to broady temperature. Definitely when you are going to respire a very warm temperature, suppose if you are in a desert, you will be breathing a very warm uh, kind of air. So that time the body will not be able to take warm air. So what they'll do, you used to get a lot of water outside your nose. That is because the conductive system is able to maintain the temperature in your body. If the temperature increases, the enzymes will degrade. So the temperature of the inhaled air is brought to body temperature. Yes, this is the performance or this is the function of the conducting part. Correct. But they ask you to find out which is not the function. So we will eliminate this option. Next one. It provides surface of diffusion of oxygen and carbon dioxide. Easy question. We know that the diffusion of carbon dioxide and ox oxygen takes place in alveoli region, not in the conducting part. Only in the sac-like structure, you will see, suppose this is the bronchioles, 
and in this area only the exchange of gases will take place so this is not done by the conductive part so we have to choose option number 2 as the correct statement let's look in for the next option it clears inhaled air from foreign particles yes whenever you are going to take any kind of air you used to sneeze it out because the nostrils are the conducting part help in eliminating the foreign particles so this is the function so we will not do this one inhaled air is humidify yes so the air which you are taking will always have your nose will have or nostrils will have mucus so it is actually humidify this is also a function of a conducting system but they ask you for not the function so the correct answer goes is option number b okay the next is section b we are going to talk this is going to have some 20 question where you will be choosing some 15 question if you have selected 15 question properly then you are at a safer side which of the following statement is not true very important i'm going to talk about two important things one is going to be homologous organ another one is going to be analogous organ homo means something which is same but let's understand same ancestors let's talk about it and analogous organ and then we'll come back to this question back again okay this is very important so we know homologous organs means or homologous structures means just understand they will have a common ancestors parent are going to be the same but what would have happened they would go to different different places okay so homologous organs or structure actually would have come from the same ancestors if it is from ectodermal layers all of them will be from the ectoderms only so common ancestors you will see only in homologous situation analogous will have different ancestors so one will come from ectoderm one will come from endoderm one cell, one organ will come from mesoderm so they have different ancestors okay and very important thing you have to see it develops in a related species very important so what can exactly happen if the ancestors are same then the species are related correct but what exactly happens they move to some different places move to different place they move to different place that time what they will do they will make some changes they are all coming from the same ancestors they have they are related species but if they have to go to australia one bird if one bird wants to go to america or one bird wants to come to india according to the climatic situation they just changes so that is going to be divergent evolution okay same ancestors but they they go and they perform different functions which means if i'm talking about one organ let's take human being leg of a dog flipper of a whale fishes all are homologous structure which means they might have come from the same ancestors same ancestor but different function this is important homologous means just remember same ancestors but different function and divergent evolution analogous means just make it ulta different ancestors and they come from different origin different origin but they will all perform same function same function same function same function you can take the bird's wing and the bat's wing insect's wing the main purpose is what for flying all have same function but they are not coming from the same origin they are all coming from different origin fins fishes mainly responsible for what for swimming purposes same function but different origins we can say this is we can say it is convergent evolution so homologous same ancestors different functions analogous different ancestors same functions and homologous are diverse evolution and this is convergent evolution so let's check for the questions now okay we know homology means what just now i told you common ancestry this is a correct statement but they ask you to find out the not correct statement or not true so let's not take this one analogous structures i'm going for the third point are result of convergent i told you homologous are divergent evolution analogous are going to be convergent evolution so this statement is correct so i am going to eliminate this because they ask for not true statement sweet potato and potato is an example of analogy correct so they are going to be same function sweet potato is actually root modified they arises from roots actually but the main purpose of a sweet potato is mainly for storage 
and potato is actually stem modified but their performance is also storage they come from different origin but the role is going to be same function is same that is analogous different origin but functions are same so this is a correct statement but they ask you to find out which is not correct so first statement is correct sec third statement is correct fourth statement so which is the wrong statement we are checking for the second one so let's check for the second one flippers of penguin just now we have seen and dolphins dolphins fins we can say they are a pair of homologous organ flippers is also for swimming dolphins flippers is also for swimming which means same function both are for swimming only same function same function but different origin which means they are going to be analogous so they have given homologous here which is a wrong statement so the correct answer for this question is option b or we can say the second option okay let's move to the next question question number 187 which of the following are not the effects not the effects of parathyroid hormone not the effect let's see which means what is not the role of a parathyroid you have to find out we know let's understand parathyroid hormones role we'll write all the functions of parathyroid hormone parathyroid hormones main role is first they break the bones bone is broken this breaking down of the bones very specifically bone is made up of osteoblast osteoclast osteocytes so they are going to break one important cell which is called osteoblast so osteoblast is broken so parathyroid hormones will always break osteoblast in a cell and suppose let's consider this is the osteoblast inside there will be lot of calcium so if parathyroid hormones comes from the parathyroid gland this osteoblast will break open and all the calcium will come where will the calcium come all the calcium will come to the blood if all the calcium come to the blood the increase in the calcium level in the blood will happen correct so what exactly happened parathyroid hormone is responsible for breaking off breaking bones and breaking down of bones very specifically osteoblast this process is called as bone resorption so parathyroid hormone is responsible for the performing process of bone resorption and i told you it also helpful in increase in the calcium level in blood and parathyroid hormone plays another important role digestion whenever a digestion takes place suppose you are consuming a milk so calcium is present over there so this calcium will be increased in the digestion or we can say absorption of calcium from your food calcium by digestion is actually improved by parathyroid hormones so this is also the function of this one so let's check which of the following is not the function let's write function here not the function stimulates the process of bone reabsorption i told you this point is one of the function but they ask you not the function so i'm going to eliminate this option and i told you it increases the calcium in the blood so they have given decreases the calcium level in the blood which is not a function the main role is to increase the calcium level but they have given decreases the calcium level so i will be choosing this because this is the incorrect statement they ask you to select the incorrect statement so this is not the function so i'm selecting b reabsorption of calcium by renal tubules yes it is also a correct statement so i will eliminate this option because if renal tubes are there all the calcium will come back again to the blood only ultimately calcium level is increased which is a role of pth so now i will not choose the third option fourth option decreases the absorption of calcium no it actually increases the absorption of calcium from the digested food so this is also going to be what the incorrect statement so i'm choosing the incorrect statement b is a incorrect statement d is a incorrect statement and pth do not have a role in carbohydrate the main role of carbohydrate is actually performed by glucocorticoids so this is also not the role so b is not the role we can say b is not the role and d is not the role 
of PTH, we can say, and E is also the no, not the role of it. So, which of the following is not the effect of parathyroid hormonus B, D, and E? So, the correct answer is going to be option number four, which is B, D, and E. Okay, let's go for the next one. Select the incorrect statement regarding synapses. Synapses, let's talk about it. Suppose, let me consider this is going to be the nerves, and neurons usually have dendrites. And they're going to have axons here. This is dendrites. And here you're going to see a lot of axonal bulbs. And there's an other neuron which is actually nearby with the dendrites. So the connection between the neurons we're going to see. The connection between the axon terminal and the dendrites. We're going to see. How is the synapsis? This is called as postsynaptis. And this is presynapsis. That is what we're going to see. So let's check. Which of the following is incorrect? This time they have made a lot of incorrect statement which you, in order to confuse you, it's very simple if you understand it perfectly. Incorrect statement regarding synapses. Chemical synapses use neurotransmitters. Chemical synapses means what vesicles used to have a lot of neurotransmitters inside, neurotransmitter vehicle, which can be acetylcholine, many things. So they use this. Chemical synapses uses neurotransmitter. This is a correct statement, but they ask you to find out the incorrect statement. So I'm going to eliminate this option. Second one, impulse transmission across chemical synapses is always faster than that of electrical synapses. Listen carefully. They are talking about if the synapses is mainly because of chemical reaction and if it is mainly because of electrical reaction, which is fast, usually electrical reaction is very faster than a chemical but they have given just the opposite of it. Impulse transmission across chemical synapses is always faster. No, they are actually slower than electrical. So this is the wrong statement. So we have to choose second statement, incorrect statement. So I'm choosing this statement because electrical synapses are faster than a chemical synapses. Let's check for this. The membranes of presynaptic and postsynaptic neurons are in close uh, proximity in electrical. Very important, yes. So here, this is the presynapsis, which is the axonal bulb. And this is the dendrite one, which is the postsynapsis. When you compare in an electrical synapsis, this will be very close. In chemical synapses, it will be far. But in electrical synapses, they'll be very close. This is a correct statement. So I'm going to eliminate this. Electrical current flows from one neuron to another. This is also a correct statement. But they ask you to find out incorrect one. So I'm using the second option. So the answer for this question is very simple. It's option number two. Okay, the next question. Match the list one and list two with respect to contraception, reproductive health chapter and their respective actions. Very easy question. If you at least know option number D, you will be ending up with the correct one. Let's see. So lactational amnoheria, which doesn't mean lactation is something related with women uh, milking purposes or the ejection of milk during that time. Usually, when a woman is actually providing milk to the baby, there is always an absence of med. This is a condition we are talking. If a person is going to have lactational amnesia, there would not be menstrual cycle and ovulation after giving delivery or delivery of a, after a baby. After delivering a baby, the menstrual cycle will stop in that woman and the ovulation also stop if the woman is going to have this situation. So this is lactational amnesia. Usually women after this can undergo this problem also. So if you know option D, it is going to be this statement. We can let me just move a bit so you can literally see over here. It is this statement, this statement actually. So it is fourth one and first one also have. So let's check in for this. So you're ending up with this and this option. So I'm going to eliminate this and this. Diaphragms. Diaphragms are mainly responsible to cover the cervix, female part, in order to prevent the entry of the sperm. This is a barrier method. Contraceptive pills means it is medicines. Usually people used to take combination pills like uh, estrogen, progesterone together. It actually prevents implantation, which is progesterone means mainly responsible for implantation. So B is going to be one. So you're seeing only in option number four, B is one and D is three. Okay. Intrauterine devices, just now we have seen, it is introduced into the uterus. So the answer gives you, uterus is seen only here. So it is 
two increases phagocytosis, which means it engulfs the sperm whenever it comes. And lactation anomalia. So the correct answer is A is going to be four, B is one, C is two, and D is three. So the correct answer is option number four. Okay. Select the incorrect again an incorrect statement with uh, related to acquired immunity. Acquired means this acquired immunity you will develop after birth. During birth, that is not acquired. That is innate immunity. But after birth, when you will show some resistance, when you get a lot of infection, your body produces a lot of antibodies. So you are acquiring immunity after your birth that is acquired. Now they ask you to find out incorrect statement. First, let's check what are the correct statement. Anamnestic response is due to memory of first encounter. Let's understand. Suppose there is a person. Let's consider there is a person here. Let's consider there's a person here, person. Let's consider this is a person. And this person one is actually, let's consider the baby actually, okay? This baby is first getting one infection. Let's take some typhoid, typhoid. This is the first encounter. First time the baby is experiencing typhoid. That time inside the baby's body, what will happen is there would be production of B cells and memory cells. So this used to come from plasma cells. This B cells will produce a lot of antibody against the typhoid or we can say Salmonella typhi, which is an antigen. And usually in the first counter, it takes a lot of time because they are experiencing the new species for the first time. That's why when you get a fever, you used to uh, wait for some two to three days. After that only, it will be fine back again. So first encounter will always be very slow very slow first encounter when the baby is getting typhoid for the first time so what happened to this memory cells memory cells will remember yes salmonella typhi has come inside my body so i have to remember it suppose there's a second situation the baby after some 10 days let's consider the baby after some 10 days is experiencing the same infection which is salmonella typhi that time the baby will directly Memory cells will remember, yes, already I have been infected with salmonella typhi. Let me produce more, more antibody, not one, two, three antibody. It will be many, many antibodies. So this is going to be kind of very, very faster. This is called rapid or this rapid word is related to anaptistic. Okay, this is rapid. So rapid response is due to Memory of the first counter, yes. Why the second time it is coming very fast? Because they have remembered during the first counter itself. So it is a correct statement, but they ask you to find out incorrect. So I'm going to eliminate this one. This is a correct statement, actually. The second one, acquired immunity is very specific. The immunity that you get after your birth is very specific. But in our option, they have given non-specific, which means this is a wrong statement. So the correct answer is, option number two so the correct answer is option number two the rest of the options are correct let us check option number three primary response is produced which means the first encounter primary is first when our body encounters the pathogen for the first time correct first encounter will happen only if salmonella typhi or any infection comes for the first time rapid response anamnestic response is elicited if they are going to encounter the same pathogen again and again, second and third. So this is also a correct statement, but you have to select the wrong statement. So the wrong statement is going to be option B, which is second one. Okay, the next one, statement related to human insulin are given below. Which of the following are correct about genetically engineered insulin? Very important. Genetically engineered ins insulin are functional. Insulin is mainly responsible to maintain the glucose level in the body, very specifically to people who are suffering from diabetes mellitus. Usually we won't produce pro-hormones. It is functional hormone. Wrong statement. Let us reject because pro-hormones will not be given. A peptide and B peptide will be there. Yes, there are A, B, C peptides in pro-hormone, but functional ones will have A and B peptide. And they are produced separately in E. coli, correct? In E. coli only we will produce. And they are going to combine with disulfide bond, yes. So the correct statement is option B. They ask you for correct statement, it is option B. Let's check third one. The third one is insulin 
use for treating diabetes was extracted from cattle and pigs no if you're going to give insulin produced from a cattle and pigs it is going to cause allergic reaction so that is the purpose we actually produce it from the e coli so functional genetically engineered in insulin will not be produced from cattle and pigs so this is also a wrong statement first is also a wrong statement then the next statement pro hormone insulin needs to be processed to become matured and functional hormone no we are talking about genetically engineered ones which means they are functional already it is functional why you have to make them back again so it is also going to be a wrong statement some patients develop allergic reactions to foreign insulin no if suppose some patients will develop allergic reaction to foreign insulin if the insulin is taken from a cattle like pig but here in case of genetically in engineered insulin we will not take it from pig or cattle we used to take human insulin any person who is having a very good insulin production from that person we will take and we will introduce into the e coli and we will make lot of insulin and then we introduce into the patient so which means we are isolating it from a human and then into a human not from so usually you won't have any allergic reactions so i'm just eliminating this also so the correct answer for this question is option number 2 so i'm just collecting this one okay the next one match list one with list two so we can say it is fourth option which is b only so the correct answer is b only for this question number 191 192 is a direct question glycogen is mainly a storage saccharides if many glucose if you are eating lot of chapati so what exactly happen you have taken 10 chapati which you usually doesn't eat at all so all the glucose will be stored in the liver and muscles so can i now say this is a storage product yes so a is going to be 4 you're going to see a is going to be 4 in option number 2 and option number 4 so i am eliminating this two option globulin immunoglobulin immunoglobulin ig g a m e d it's an antibody correct biomolecular question yes so it is b is going to be 3 so you are ending up with the correct statement which is option number 2 a is 4 b is 3 steroids are going to be hormones yes steroid hormones testosterone aldosterone steroids so c is one and thrombins are biocatalyst yes we know thrombins are the one which converts fibrinogen which is inactive form into a fibrin which is active form and this is responsible for clotting purpose so it is a catalyst which is a biocatalyst yes so d is going to be option number 2 so the correct answer for this question is option 2 yes next one which of the following is not a desirable not a desirable feature of cloning vector so if you going to talk about a vector or a plasmid usually they have a origin of replication ori region correct so this statement is correct but you have to find out which is not so this is a correct statement the presence of marker gene yes they will have a marker gene definitely some ampicillin resistant or tetracycline resistant will be there this is a correct statement and presence of single restriction enzymes yes they will have a enzyme restriction sites like bam h1 or something will be present this is also a correct statement but in our book in page number 199 if you observe from our ncert book you can see in order to link an alien dna the vector needs to have very few or single restriction recognition site but in our option they have given two or more recognition sites so in our according to our ncert book it has to be single recognition site but the option they have given as what more recognition sites which is a wrong statement so they ask you to find out the wrong statement or we can say not the desirable one so the answer for this question is option d you can check for page number 199 okay the next one 10 e coli cells with 15 n double stranded are incubated with in a medium containing 14 nucleotide after 60 minutes how many e coli cells will be formed first let's understand this this is the most important question just listen so first they are talking about 10 e coli i'm going to consider one e coli and we will do multiplication 10 e coli with 15 en double stranded dna are incubated so they are all what 15 so this is going to be n15 this is n15 this is a double strand so i'm writing them separated like this n15 and n15 so i'm writing n15 n15 and this is actually incubated in a e coli containing 
n14 n14 so for our understanding i'm just writing n14 in a different color so just let me make it this way n14 n14 in this color this is also one e coli this is also one e coli and e coli will always divides in 20 minutes so this is one dna this is one dna i'm just considering so what will happen there will be semi conservative replication so this will be n15 and they used to get one from n14 this will become n14 and this one we can write this one this is n15 and then they used to get this one also so it is going to be n14 here so this is a hybrid this is the normal one or we can say normal e coli and this is the incubated e coli so now when you're going to mix two things together you're going to get two hybrids this is one hybrid this is the second hybrid okay let's take this is the first situation but they ask for 60 minutes if you see the question after 60 minutes so let's check for 60 minutes after what will happen next 20 minutes so 1 2 let me write it and here it is going to be one over here and i'm writing the same thing here this one here n15 n14 n15 n14 so again the same is incubated with a normal n15 n14 and n14 n14 here n14 here now the next 20 minutes so i'm calculating 20 plus 20 as 40 minutes now what you will be having you have to do the same thing so first let me take this one here and let me take all these things and write it separately here one and i'm writing this one here and i'm writing this one here i'm just separating all the strands like this and now i'm going to bring this strand here so i will write this one here and i will write this one here all n14s here all n14s here so this is n15 n14 this is n14 n14 yellow color this is n14 n14 this is n15 this is n14 so here one hybrid and here this two are going to be we can say this two are going to be uh, normal n14 n14 and this last is going to be hybrid so after 40 minutes suppose if i have to talk about 40 minutes you will see two hybrids which means n15 n14 and then you will get two n14 n14 the question is 60 minutes what is the chance it will be see the question how many e coli cells will have dna totally free from 15 so let's write it 1 2 3 and 4 let me write like this so the first one is going to have like this the last one is going to have like this so the rest of the things is going to remain the same let me just erase this one so it is the last situation we have seen so this is after 40 minutes so this is n15 n14 all are n14 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 this is n14 and this is n15 and after 60 minutes what's going to be the scenario let's do just make n14 n14 here again we are using it now just separate all the strands 1 2 3 and then write it here 1 2 3 and let me write white one here white one here let me write the white one here i'm writing the first one up and the second one down so up and down i'm writing up and down i'm writing and i'm writing this one up and this one down yes so i'm writing this one down and just put all the yellow color onto this n14 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 here n14 here n14 here and n14 so only you're getting two hybrids so it's going to be n15 n14 and this is n15 n14 so totally out of 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 and 8 two are hybrids which means all of them are going to be n14 n14 which means how many are going to be remaining six so i'm calculating it six are going to be n14 n14 which means they are free of n15 if 10 is given just multiply it by 10 so totally how many cells will have n14 n14 only which means free from n15 means they are talking about n14 n14 so which is going to be 60 cells six cells for one we are talking one cell gives 60 six cells 
at the end of 60 minutes. So 10 cells will give 60 cells. So the correct answer is going to be option number one. Okay, let's do for the next question. Which of the following is actually correct? We have to find out. Blood moves freely from atrium to ventricle. So we know blood usually go from atrium, right atrium to right ventricle and left atrium to left ventricle when the heart is relaxing. Correct statement. They ask you to find out the correct statement. So the correct statement, the first option itself is a correct statement. But let's check for the next statement. The next statement actually says increased ventricular pressure. Listen carefully. If suppose I'm talking about the ventricles. If the ventricular pressure is increased, what will happen? This semilunar walls, which means this is going to be the pulmonary artery and this is going to be the aorta. And both of them are going to have semilunar walls. When the pressure is maximum, semilunar walls will open. If pressure is maximum, increased pressure will cause opening of semilunar walls but they have given closing which is a wrong statement i'm gonna not gonna select it av node will not generate action potential it is sa node sa node only will generate action potential which is again a wrong statement the next statement is a very tricky statement we know about tricuspid and bicuspid wall listen carefully so this is the tricuspid wall and this is the bicuspid wall and this tricuspid wall and bicuspid wall will open when the blood used to come from this atria and from left atria. But they have given very tricky tricuspid and bicuspid wall will open due to the pressure exerted by simultaneous contraction of arteries. Yes, but the pressure is not exerted by atria. The pressure is actually exerted by blood. They have not talked about blood here. Pressure exertion is mainly happening by the blood. So this is also a wrong statement. So the correct statement for this question is option number one. Okay. Recombination frequency between the genes A and C. They have given the gene. You have to map the gene. So A and C, they are telling the distance is going to be 5. Let me write 5%. B and C is 15%, but we know this B can be before also, B can be behind also. For now, I'm making B before. This is first situation. I'm writing B before and I'm just considering B and C is 15 now. B and C is 15%. So 15 and B and D is 9. You cannot do B and D 9 now. Okay, you cannot do. So this statement, this I cannot do it. So I'm going for the second case. A and C is 5. Yes, I'm writing 5. And B and C is 15%. So I'm writing B here. And this is B and C is 15%, 15 centimeter or distance we can say. B and D is 9%. B and D. B and D, I'm writing D here, which is 9%. A and B is 20%. So this A and this B is 20% correct because this is 5. This is 15, so it becomes 15, uh, 20 here. C and D is 24%. C and D is 24% correct. 15 plus 9 makes 24. Yes, it is correct. And A and D is 29. Yes, A and D is totally here 20, here 9, so 29. So the sequence is A, C, B, and D. So where are you seeing this option? Second option. So the correct answer for this question is this one. 197 question. Which of the following is a correct statement? Okay. Slime moles are under kingdom Monara. No. Monara usually bacteria. It is actually protista. So this is a wrong statement, but they ask you to find out the correct statement. So this is wrong. Let me reject. Mycoplasma is the most smallest cell, but they do not have cell wall. But they have given cell wall is present. So this is a wrong statement. Next one. Cyanobacteria is a group of autotrophs. Yes, they are going to perform photosynthesis. And they can bring under Monara bacteria. So under Monara, we will bring back all the bacteria, U bacteria, cyanobacteria. Correct statement. So the correct answer is third one. Bacteria are exclusively heterotrophic. No, some bacteria can actually make what? autotrophic in nature, which means they can prepare its own food. So this is also a wrong statement. So the correct answer is going to be what? Third statement. This is the correct statement. Okay. Let's move for the next question. Given below are two statements. We have to find out the statement. 
in a scrubber the exhaust from the thermal plant is passed through the electric wires to charge the dust particle the main role of a scrubber is to produce sulfur dioxide not to remove dust particles that is not the role of a scrubber if you remember the limestone which is actually present inside the scrubber actually produces so2 so this is a wrong statement then who can remove the dust particle yes electrostatic precipitator electrostatic precipitator is the one which actually removes dust particles so this second statement is actually correct so statement 1 is incorrect but statement 2 is correct that you are seeing only in option number 2 so the correct answer for this question is option 2 okay if a colorblind female marries a man whose mother was also colorblind what are the chances of a progeny having colorblind? Easy question. Very easy question. Let's write this is a colorblind female. Let's write colorblind female. So she is colorblind, which is XC, X. So female used to have both. The, she's blind, colorblind. And she marries a man. And this man's mother, mother is actually colorblind. This mother is colorblind. Marries a man whose mother was also colorblind. She is also colorblind. Just understand, if the mother is colorblind, ultimately the son is also colorblind. They, are, they didn't tell you, but it is understood. He used to get, suppose let's consider the father is normal. And the, from the father, he will get Y, correct? And from the mother, both are going to be colorblind. So he will be, he will also be affected. In this case, how can I do? All of them, XC, XC and XC and Y and then XC and XC. And then X, C, and Y. If you observe, this girl is also colorblind. This boy is colorblind. This girl is also colorblind. This guy is also colorblind. So all of them are colorblind. So it is going to be 100 percentage. They are colorblind. So the correct answer for this question is option number two. The last question, match list one with list two. Very easy question. It's bronchioles. So bronchioles are fallopian tube, if you observe, they are always going to be cilias because in our bronchioles, dust used to come. They have to be eliminated with the help of cilia. In fallopian tube also, the zygote has to move or we can say the egg has to move. So they have ciliated epithelium like this. And we know goblet cells. Goblet cells can be cuboidal or columnar in nature, but they used to be glands. Goblet cells mainly secrete uh, mucus, we know. So they are glandular tissue. And we know tendons. Tendons are the one which connects between a bone and a muscle. And this is going to be the tendon. Tendon is going to be a dense connective tissue. So tendons are dense connective tissue. Adipose are going to be loose connective tissue. This adipose is already given in one of the questions. So if you know this, it's going to be very easy. So let's check A is going to be actually 4. And so you're seeing A is 4 in option only in option number 3. So we have done all the questions that is given in your question paper, which is paper code number S3. So I hope all of you understood the questions and the answers very specifically. We have done all the detailed explanation. If you guys want to know about botany or chemistry question, you can join back ag again. And thank you all of you for joining. And if you really guys want The description box or you can also get the link in the screen available over there just check in and i'm going to meet you back again in the next video thank you all of you